Hi and good evening folks, uh, welcome to Sundays in Scotland on Ripple FX and Ripple FX Cape Breton. This show's been great fun to do. I'm Peter Wood, I'm your host from the Shetland Islands. I think our internet's being a wee bit funny tonight, so here's hoping we can get there. Um, my co-host Ross uh, McNaughton from Pitlochry and Pipes hasn't managed to connect tonight yet so far. So um, we'll try our best to get Ross on as soon as we can as well. Uh, we've got some fantastic guests for you tonight. We've got two guests. We've got Morgan Tony, um, a great Britain lad coming on with the fiddle. And in the second bit of the show, we've got Kevin Henderson from the Shetland Islands, who now lives in Norway, uh, coming on with the fiddle as well. So we've got a lot good good music to look forward to tonight so i think what we'll do is i'll start off where we set of tunes tonight two pipe marches in the accordion the first one's murdo mckenzie at torridon uh, and the second one is the mcneils of yugadale and we'll finish the set with a wee reel called chris worrell so hopefully this will get your feet tapping remember any comments or anything please please uh uh, give us a shout. We'd love to hear from people on this show, uh, even when the guests are on. If you've got any questions on that, please file them into us. Uh, we're human beings and we're just uh, musicians that are uh, doing this. And it's all started because of lockdowns, etc. And it's just been great fun. So, And uh, if, if you could share the live stream, that would be great. That would be fab to uh, share it about with other people and get the show going. So here's a wee set. Tunes, tunes. Tunes from Shetland tonight. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go, folks. So we set our current tunes to get you going tonight. Murdo Mackenzie at Torrid and the McNeils at Yugadale and Chris Worrell. So that's a wee reel at the end there. What I thought I'd play for you tonight as well is just a, a wee polka. Um, there's uh, two polkas here. There's the first one is called Bert's Highland Polka and the second one is the Royal Scots Polka. And after I've done that, I'm going to bring one of our guests on. Nice to see some folks sending in some comments already. Somebody there from Caithness. And there was someone else saying they loved hearing the Scottish and the Cape Breton together. So that's what you're going to hear tonight, sir. And the Shetland, the whole bit. So here we go. There's another wee couple of tunes. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Kelly Irene says that's a fine tune to fold laundry to. Now I'm like folding up the towels when we're going on there. Anyway, that's great. Thank you. You're joining us here tonight on Ripple FX Cape Brown. Please feel free to share it about. Let as many people know that we're doing this wee show now. I think this is week number six we're in now. And uh, we're going to uh, try and keep going for there. The... What I want to do now is bring on our first guest for this evening. Uh, this young man is making a bit of a name for himself in Cape Breton. Uh, so we're going to bring on uh, uh, Morgan Tony. Morgan Tony is going to join us. Hi, Morgan. How are you doing, man? Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Great to see you. Great to see you. You're on the other side of the Atlantic, but you're looking well. <laughs> 
Uh, Thank you so much. If, if I go if I go out my door and started swimming, I would get to you eventually. <laughs> oh, it yeah. Could, it could take a while. Yeah. Well, well, Morgan, it's absolutely fantastic having you on. Uh, now, we, we you were helping we, me with pronunciation earlier on when I said Mikaman. Is that right? Yeah, you're, you're almost there. Uh, Mikaman. 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 <laughs> there we go. That's great. Uh, so you know, make a math fiddler. We've never had a make a math fiddler on before. This is a first. This is a first, and I'm delighted it's yourself. Uh, I've been reading up a wee bit about your story, sir. Uh, you're a relatively newcomer to the fiddle. Yeah. How long have you been playing now? I only been playing the fiddle for just a year now. That's incredible. That's incredible. And you, you were a drummer before that, weren't you? Yes, um, I was a drummer. Uh, that's right. And, and so, 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 you, so you decided to become a real musician? <laughs> well, it's something that people would like to listen to. You wouldn't want to listen to just people playing drums for two hours. So. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> what kind of stuff did you... Did I read you were into... Uh, what, what, was it rock you were playing before? Or? Um, it was mostly rock uh, and funk. Um, I started lessons with Sean Dalton. He was with the Canadian rock band, The Trues. And I, okay. I was, he was based out of Anaganish, and I took lessons from him starting in 2016, leading up to 2019. So, Fantastic. Yeah, so he taught me a lot of techniques and stuff. And then you went to university. Yeah. And you've got involved with the fiddle. Yeah, and I didn't know, honestly, that that was going to happen. It's a yeah. traditional music course, right? And um, I was just going because I had this love for music. And I didn't play any instruments, but I wanted to learn more about it and to get my Bachelor of Arts in music. So uh -huh. when you're enrolled in that music program at Cape Breton University, um, it's all based on traditional music, you know, the music of the island, you know, Cape Breton Island, the fiddle and the styles. And um, I think um, I had to take this performance course and on my first year, I'm in my second year now. I just finished my second year. I got two more years yeah. to go. But on my first year, um, I had to enroll myself in a performance course. And it was a fiddle course. So my my best friend, Tyler uh, Bernard, he gave me my very first fiddle when he purchased a new one. Right. So I, um, I said, yeah, I have a fiddle at home, but I don't know how to play it. And I started uh, to classes with Stan Chapman. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So Stan, uh, oh, he's, he's amazing. He had a lot of patience. So mm -hmm. I started from nothing, and yeah. with lessons with Stan, you know, I kind of found a foundation of where I want to be and yeah. what I want to sound like. And you know, I just kept on giving her, and I said, okay, you know what? A lot of people from home really want me to play the fiddle. So really? that's what kind of kept me moving. Like I well, we are going, frustrated because you we know are it's, good to, yeah. it's a difficult we, we, we are going to talk about that in a wee while about the people from home oh, being yes. so encouraging to you and very encouraging, I think. Um, so um, do you fancy giving us a wee tune just now to begin with? And then we'll get on to some more chat after that, possibly. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, think you've been, I think you've been composing and everything, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. All of the tunes here are my arrangements, so it's pretty, Brilliant. it's going to be good. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we want yeah. to hear. That's what we want to hear. What, what are you okay. giving us this time, Morgan? All right, so I'm going to play um, a composition I made. Um, so there's this trail up in Wicogama. It's called the South Mountain Trail. You go up the mountain, beautiful look off up top, and I'll play, uh -huh. uh, I'll play it for you here. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. 
Fantastic, sir. Beautiful, beautiful melody. Beautiful, beautiful. What did what did you call that tune? Um, it's called the South Mountain. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, is that local in your area then? Yes. It's just like uh, so. How my area is so. There's Waikagama. All right. Okay. It's a, there's a bridge, right? So on the other side of the bridge is Waikagama, and mm -hmm. once you pass the bridge. You enter Wagoma, which is our Mi'kmaq community. Okay. Okay. So and how many how many people live in the community there? Then is it? I could be wrong, but I believe it's seven hundred to nine hundred people. Quite a lot of people. Yeah. 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 We're thriving. We have uh, the fish uh, fish business is is going well. We got the Tim Hortons, you know, built up. We got a store. A lot of local businesses. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. Because such a history, I mean, the, the, the community would go back in, in years. But how, how far back can we go? Four or five hundred years further back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a long, a long, long time. Yeah. So do you here, work with... Uh, we've been here for about maybe the Mi'kmaq for about 13,000 years, around there. 13,000 years? Yeah, a long wow. time. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a lot of tradition. That's a lot of tradition. Yeah. Was music a big part of the, uh, the the community in general? Is music a big part of the community? Yes, I would say so. Like a lot of local bands came out of Wagama, and so uh -huh. there's a lot of people that play music as well. Uh, there's guitar players or singers. Um, there used to be. Um, fiddle players as well in Wagama First Nation. So right now there's yeah, there's quite a bit of musicians in this community. I I reckon Rebecca, you know Rebecca that runs this show as well. Uh, I reckon that last comment on the screen is payback time for me. <laughs> as I have given her an exceptionally hard time about <laughs> Scottish folk names and places, the way she says some of the things. So uh -huh. suddenly it's payback time that you have to make me learn some words. So, All right. So I'll make you... Uh, make them, make, make them clean. 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 No root. <laughs> All right. I'll teach you one. God. The Mi'kmaq word for Cape Breton is unamagi. Unamagi. Not too oh, so bad. bad. <laughs> that, that wasn't too bad. That was whew, that was. Uh, I I was trying to get her to say things like Taina Bruach and things like this. She, she found it quite difficult. Uh, but I never mind. That's, uh, so so was there many of your elders that played violin or anything like that in the community then? Or? Um, I heard a couple. Um, yeah, I heard a couple stories. A lot of elders played. Um, so I right now I live in both, two communities right now. So the community that I'm in right now is Wagamaw First Nation. Uh, but back in 2015, I moved to another community 15 minutes away, the closest community to this one. Uh, it's called Wamako First Nation, and I live there with my dad. There okay. is a elder that lives there. His name is Ben Peck, and he plays the violin. He's about 93 years old. He's been playing for most of his life. Well, wow, great. Yeah. And with the music that we're playing, was it a, a music from the community or was it like Cape Breton music on the fiddle that people would play? Or? 
I would say that it was more, um, they, they played a lot of Scottish, you know, Scottish fiddle music. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, you know, yeah. like the influencers like Winston Scotty Fitzgerald. You yeah. know, those were yeah. big names to them, and they learned a couple tools of them. Right? All right, so stuff like that came in and crept in, and they heard it and played, and so it's good. The, the big thing, of course, um, here with the fiddle, and I, I think with you as well, that you quite often accompanied with the piano, but uh, in Shetland as well, quite guitar accompaniment was quite often used as well, uh, purely for ease, because most people didn't have pianos for a start, but getting pianos to the islands was really, really difficult. So uh, they used to have these old uh, pedal organs in the house. It was like the old pedal organ that you pedaled. And yeah. there was they were all over the place. They were everywhere. And, yeah, I read about that actually up at university. Yeah, and it's amazing how you come across these things. When I was out, and I was out in Ghana teaching in Africa, and um, there was a, I came across a pedal organ, and the school every morning that I was teaching at, they would sing a hymn, and this morning they started singing this hymn, and I thought, oh, man, I, I recognised that melody and the tune, and it was the same tune that we used at a festival here called Up Helia, which is all about the Vikings. Exactly the same tune, which was a Norwegian hymn tune in Ghana. So it must have got there somehow. So it's this great world they travel in, and I'm sure your people traveled a lot as well. Wow, it's amazing. And, and the Scots and Irish, of course, went everywhere, didn't they? <laughs> they arrived all over the place. I, I heard a thing on Facebook yesterday of you singing as well. You were singing. Oh, are you. Are you are you going to give us a song tonight as well? Yeah, um, yeah, I'll give you guys a, a song. That would be great, because I, I loved yeah. that. I was listening to it yesterday. It was good. <laughs> today. Today. I think you had Mary Beth playing with you, did you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. We played at, uh, <laughs> it was funny. It was yesterday where we played at the Dorman Pub up in Shitty Camp. And that's, yeah. uh, that's a hotbed for Celtic music. Right. And so, yeah, so... I have two friends that we usually travel with, you know, to gigs who support one another. Um, it's Tara and Bradley. And we were heading to the same destination. But what was funny is we didn't know that none of us were coming. So we all showed up at the same time. We're like, how'd you guys get here? We didn't know you were coming. And then <laughs> so we all had a table and we supported Mary Beth. She was playing with uh, Mac Morin and Howard okay. McDonald. Yeah. And uh, when I was eating my clubhouse, right? Um, I was having a good time. I was vibing. I was having a good time eating my food. And then um, it was actually Howie McDonald and Mary Beth. They invited me onto the stage at Doryman. My first time at Doryman. And Howie's like, would you be willing to play a few tunes for him? For us? He's like, okay. So everywhere I go, I pack my fiddle with me in my truck. So I don't know what could happen. So I was yeah. like, okay. So I'll go in the truck and get my fiddle. And Howie was like, no, use mine. So that was oh. a huge honor. To use how really? yeah, yeah, not and, bad. Eh? Yeah, it was amazing. It was my first time at the Doorman, first time on the Doorman stage, and what if it can gonna get any better? I got to play Howie McDonald's fiddle, so that was pretty good. It's amazing. I, 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 I often want wish when you say that you play the fiddle. I often wish I'd played the fiddle because it's far easier to carry about than a great big accordion all over the place. Believe me. Yeah. Someone told yeah, me, like, you either have a fiddle in your hand or a cup of tea. It's either one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got longer arms for carrying my accordion. That's, <laughs> 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 so that's a bit. Anyway, it'd be great if you could give us uh, uh, that. Uh, so what is this song? Can you tell us a wee bit about it? Yeah, so um, I'll play. Um, it's two tunes in one. So the first one is... Uh, it's a song that's very special, you know, to my heart and to the Mi'kmaq Nation. I'm going to play you and everyone who's watching at home the Mi'kmaq Honor Song. And it was a song that was uh, uh, made by George Paul back in the 80s. And this song has become pretty much our anthem, you know, something like a national anthem. And, you know, it's the same thing like when you're standing up at a hockey game, when the Canadian anthem goes on, you stand up and you remove your hats and you, you stand there, right? Uh, sort of the same deal with the Make My Honor song. So Bro. it was actually in university when I was in the studio by myself and I was like, okay, I'm going to try something. So I was able to play the Make My Honor song on the fiddle. Mm -hmm. 
And over the years, you know, after practicing where my voice can go and how I can get it in, in tune with my fiddle, I'm able to sing the other song. And Fantastic. right here, yeah, at the same time. So, That's a great talent. The, 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 I've seen some bluegrass players doing it, but yeah. not many. Uh, I've done a show once with a guy called Bruce Molsky. And, and Bruce can sing and play at the same time and all that as well. He's great. just he lives just outside Washington there. So. But um, yeah, go for it. Let's hear this. Awesome. I'm looking forward to this. This is excellent. Before I go ahead, my phone's like at five percent. I'm just gonna go charge it in right there. You do that. No, yeah, I'll be back no, in like fifteen seconds. So, there. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so anyway, I'll just cover time for you for 15 seconds. To, uh, Morgan is the, uh, the wonders of technology, and he's doing well if he can find uh, a charger, because in our house that we never seem to be able to find them, and, and Rebecca's house, our children steal them all the time. So, uh, hello Russell, Shearer and Largs, how are you doing? I wonder if it's a nice day down in Largs today. It's been, it was absolutely scorching hot today here in uh, Shetland. This morning I was out in my my sunbed, looking at the sea and the sun, and then uh, and tonight you would nearly think it was winter again. It's just windy and wet and everything's happening. I don't know what's going on tonight. So it's just uh, one of these things. But it's fairly common for it to be windy in in, uh, in Shetland. So, and uh, are you doing all right there, Margaret? Oh, oh, he's back. Yeah. You know yeah. I think I got something. You're back. I'm just going to make sure that, okay, we're plugged in. Yeah, you're doing good. You're doing good. I'm back. I, I was just telling people what the weather was like in the Shetland Islands. Oh, how's the it, weather? It, it was Island? really sunny and warm, and tonight it's like winter. <clears throat> it's like four seasons in it's one day. Up and oh, it's raining and windy here now, so. Um, but it's quite often windy here, you know, the, the, the people, people the, there's no trees in Shetland, there's hardly any trees either. You've got really? trees, but we've got no trees, hardly any trees. Wow. Um, so it's quite, it's it's not a good place to be a dog. <laughs> because there's uh -oh. not a tree to pee on for miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's a little rough there, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah. But that's like yeah, there's a, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of depressed dogs going about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to this song. Here we go. The honor, the honor song. <laughs>
Get me down in my nerves. Try to tell me I'm not dead. Nigga, my soul. Be my reader, honey. Get me down in my nerves. Try to tell me I'm not Nigga, my stool. Yeah, one of my jokes. Yeah, one of my jokes. Next time, guess who? Terry Gallo. Say, go, how's this from? Way, I hate you. Way, oh, hey, hi, 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 Fantastic, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you and I can tell you, you play that straight from the heart. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. No yeah, I got goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, powerful. it's very, very powerful. Very powerful. Powerful dynamic rhythm, everything going on there. What, what can you tell me? What does a, a rough cap of what, what the translation of the words means roughly? Or? Well, I can tell you uh, roughly what the message is. Like I, um, I used to know what every lyric meant. Like I, um, I'm not fluent myself in the Mi'kmaq language. Uh -huh. So when I moved to uh, Wamakuk to live with my dad, my dad's a fluent speaker. So right. I told him back in 2015. Like I only can speak. I am at the time. I can only speak English, but I wanted mm -hmm. to learn the language. You know, of my people, of my nation. So I told my dad back in 2015, he's like, I want you to speak as much Mi'kmaq as you can to me. And I told him that a couple years ago. And like to this day, I'm at that point where I can understand a conversation and I can, yeah. you know, I can say phrases and I can, you know, keep a conversation going myself. But, you know, it's, um, I'm still learning, you know, I'm learning as I go. But uh, the message of that song is to like honor our people, you know, honor a way of life, you know, our traditions and mm -hmm. how we are one with the creator. You know, that's the message that the song is sending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as you can see, Morgan, there's lots of messages coming in and people are really, really touched and enjoying the music that you're playing. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I hope that's a big encouragement to you as well to keep this going, keep this going. Do you have any plans? What would you like to do with your music? I uh, well, you know, I'm happy where I am right now. You know, I'm playing that. You know, even before the pandemic, I was playing at shows. You know, once a month or two, twice a month. Um, yeah. But what people are really asking me is, I should put out an album, and you know, that's been on my mind for a little bit. And you know, everywhere I go, like if, if I'm at work or if I'm, you know, in the community, people ask me, "Do you have a CD? When are you making your album?" Do you Definitely. Have 
So, you know, that's definitely something to look into possibly in the fall or later on. I just have to find the right people that can help me with that process. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that's a must for yourself. And I think you'll have no problem selling them. Uh, because if I can sell a couple of thousand CDs, I'm sure you can. No yeah. problem at all. No bother. And you've got a, an amazing story behind you. you. There's a unique thing going on there. And uh, and you just want to keep a hold of it and nurture it. Mm -hmm. And keep it keep it going. Keep it going. Would you uh, consider music as an occupation ever, if you've got the chance? Or Well, you know, at the... Well, I would say yes, because, you know, people know me for this, for this yeah. instrument. Um, so, like, I'm in, in Wamakuk. I help out the Wamakuk Sports and Recreation Committee, and I do a lot with that. So I'm shouting them out on here now on Ripple Effects. Um, but I would think, yes, because it has become a huge part of my life. You know, if I'm just, like, at home, I wake up. I listen to fiddle tunes. If I go to bed, I listen to fiddle tunes. So this is like this instrument and the art is with me all day. I, I think I think you would like it here in Shetland. We have an enormous amount of fiddle players in the Shetland Islands. I would love to go to Shetland. It's the it's the instrument. Still in the schools, we have oh, four or five full time teachers with sixty children each a week learning so there's probably about 400 a week getting lessons on fiddle <laughs> which is incredible yeah uh, in is. fact the young fiddler of the year they have a competition called the young fiddle of the year and unfortunately this year it's had to be postponed as well like everything else you know but i think you guys are nearly getting to the stage of doing some gigs again aren't you yeah um like yesterday was a good example of that yeah like, morning, like we're just with the I know restrictions are getting lifted, you know, very yeah. slowly. We're not, at, we're not where we want to be yet, but, you know, we're just yeah. testing the waters and see how things go. And hopefully yeah, I, think I think that's what's going to start happening here sometime as well. And it's just for us being a small island, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult because it's, it's not really too bad here just now. And you, if it came in, it's really tough going, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, we've just been careful as well. And, uh, but I know all my bookings and things have been cancelled right to about the end of the year now. There's not very much uh, happening. But I quite, I quite like the idea of the, you know, the the social distancing as well because the, it keeps the audience away from you a little bit. So when they throw stuff at you, you know, they've got less chance of hitting you. Less you chance know? of hitting you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's quite good. No, I haven't had anything thrown for a while, I must admit. That's, no, never mind. Uh, listen, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on here tonight. And I can only encourage you to go and get a website set up as well so yeah. that people can get a hold of you and get this CD on sale because I think you're going to sell loads. I think you really, really are. Um, and it's been a pleasure meeting you. Um, I hope to meet you in the real life someday. Hopefully we'll pass it. Hopefully not on the side, not on the cybernet here. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Yeah. Have you got a wee set of a wee set of tunes you could give us before we let you go yeah. tonight, Morgan? Sure. These are all is there any, anything else you'd like? Is there anything else you'd like to highlight tonight that we've not mentioned at all? Um, no, I think we're doing pretty good there, Peter. We're doing good. That's great. That's good. Just say anything you fancy. Okay, so. This next set of tunes are my compositions that I made in the last three months. Uh, the first one is um, is called Mr. Biggs. Now, there, uh, my cousin of mine passed away, uh, Wilford Prosper Jr., and I'm related to that side of the family. And his father was Wilford Prosper Sr., incredible fiddler, as well as Wilford Prosper Jr. And so I made this um, this real in tribute to him and the next tune is called Wally Jones uh Wally Denny's real and he is a good friend of mine from Escasoni and then it goes into uh another reel that is dedicated to my chief Norman Bernard up in Wamaku First Nation and the last tune is for Ben Peck and he is uh he is an elder of Wamaku First Nation also an incredible fiddle player here we go he turns on
Fantastic, sir. <laughs> ah, you've not you've not really just been playing for a year, have you? No. Nope. Yeah, that's wow, that was my for a year. Mate, God. 
if you keep this going, you're going to be some some chap. <laughs> that amazing, lovely reels, lovely reels. I don't know that you were playing away. There was two or three comments come up there, and there was ones with Shetland, and there was ones for the Orkney Islands, and there was wow. all over the place saying that they're loving the Canadian music. So this is wonderful. This is getting your name all over Shetland tonight as well. This is oh, fantastic. That's amazing. So really, really, really amazing. Uh, I think you get this album out as soon as you can, and you're going to travel the world, my son. You know what? I'm going to get started on this. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I would say so. It's, a, it's an absolute must. Morgan, thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. Um, can you tell me how to say in your language uh, good health or the best? How would you say a greeting to someone? Say, take care. Um, we usually say, uh, there could be words for that, but I know that most people say uh, thank you in our language. And how you would say thank you in Mi'kmaq is Walalin. Walag. Walalin. Walag. Walalin. Yeah, that's a more, that's more difficult than the that's difficult than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thank you, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Hope we do meet in person someday along the line somewhere. Uh, either on your side of the Atlantic or my side, or in the middle, we could just row and meet each other. Yeah, <laughs> do some do some fishing on the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, keep up, no bother, Morgan. Thanks very much for tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for thanks joining for us. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. There we go, folks. Uh, quite amazing. Playing for a year, uh, Morgan Tony and. Absolutely lovely to hear that uh, enthusiasm and uh, just for his culture and his community and all that. And uh, from what I've read in reviews and that, he's very highly regarded and people think he's just a right nice lad. So I hope he has a really good future going. Here's a wee couple of Shetland marches uh, before I bring on our next guest tonight. We don't seem to have found Mr. Ross McNaughton tonight at all. I don't know what's happened to Ross. Um, but hopefully we'll find them uh, so, so, somewhere at some point. So here's a couple of Shetland marches just now, the Headlands and the Geysers march. The Geysers march is to do with the Upheliar oh, Festival, that's the Viking Festival in Shetland, and the Geysers all go around and do different acts and guys. So that's the second thing. <laughs>
folks. A couple of Shetland matches. The Headlands by Ronnie Cooper and the Geysers match by Gideon Stowe. Now, folks, uh, I'm going to bring on another guest here, hopefully now. We're going to bring on um, a very good old friend of mine. i uh, known him for many, many years, a Shetlander, now living in Norway, uh, Mr. Kevin Henderson. Hello, Kevin. Hello, good evening. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. How are you getting on? I'm not too bad. Um uh -huh been home for a long time <laughs> i know it's a it's a bit strange this isn't it it really is it's um uh, well it'll be even more so for you because you are traveling across the atlantic the whole time really aren't you so yeah i think well a couple of tours to america cancelled and like other trips but uh, i think it's for the best to be honest just yeah now, but, but norway's pretty much back to normal and, and a lot. So, I mean, there's still some distance and restrictions and things, but it's it's pretty much back to normal, I would say. I was saying to the, the the last chap there, the Morgan that was on there playing before, I said I quite like the social distance and thing for the audience thing because there's less chance of them hitting me with stuff when they throw it now because you know <laughs> it's a wee bit further to throw things, you know. So, uh, so, um, but. Uh, no, that's great. So, uh, but yeah, it's exceptionally strange times, and we found that we ended up doing lots of different things. Uh, I, I ended up just putting a tune every day on the uh, internet and uh, on Facebook yeah. for a laugh, and, and, and then it developed into this. I got asked to do this one, so this is our sixth week of doing this show, uh, and usually that's Ross fantastic. is here. And I, I don't know what's happened with Ross tonight, but I do put Lockery's uh, cut off or something. Who knows? Uh, I, I, have, I have been telling them to, to pay as a power bill for a while. So, um, <laughs> but that's it. So, but anyway, you and I go back a long, long time ago. In fact, I found a photograph the other day of us standing in the town hall in the year 2000 when we were the musicians for Billy Gowdy's Yarrow Squad. Yeah, that was a fantastic year. A lot of good we memories for that year. We were just young lads, and and his son Scott yep. stays. His, Scott stays in Sandwick, just up the road for us here now. Of so, course, yeah. So I see him every so often, and he says, "Mind and play Dad's tune." So, so we've played it a couple of times <laughs> lately, and we've played it on the radio. So that was a. Uh, it's been. It was really good to play it again for for Billy because he was a yeah. great guy, and it was a great year. Uh, and it seems oh, like it was... un un unbelievable that it was twenty years ago. So. It's so crazy. Twenty years ago, utterly so, crazy. So obviously, uh, this is uh, Ripple FX. We're, we're we're going out through Cape Britain. So you'll have been over that way, part of the world yourself before. Yeah, I've been a couple of times to the Celtic Colours Festival. It's yeah, fantastic part of the world. It? I actually felt almost felt like Shetland in a lot of respects. To, just the the folk and the atmosphere there. It's a uh, a great place and a, amazing and, music. Tradition. And I think your dad, your dad, uh, your dad, Davy Henderson, Davy, the late Davy, your dad was over there a lot, wasn't he? He had a lot of friends over that area. He was. Yeah, he loved Cape Breton. He was there many times, and I yeah. think he became well known with a lot of the locals there. <laughs> yeah, there's probably a few folk heard there about that when we're speaking about it. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he made it. He, 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 once you met him, you didn't forget him all the time. Huh? I good. remember it. There was a great story from, a, I'm not sure it was the first trip they were there, but him and Davy Gardner went together. And they were the last two to bathe every single night. And on the <laughs> second last night, they decided to have a, an early night because they wanted to have a big night on the last night, on the 10th night. Right. So they went to bathe at half past four in oh. the morning. That was their oh, yeah. early night. That was the other day. The, they made the local, the local paper. Apparently, it's the headline was Shetlanders start to weaken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I would have made it to day eight. Never mind, whatever. But uh, do you, no, uh, do you no... fancy giving us a wee? Do you fancy giving us a wee tune, Kevin? By any chance? Yeah, why not? I'm not that, that would for be off a bro. Be a bit rusty, but. Ah, now you wonder. We've got. Um, listen, folks, if if you're looking, 
uh, Kevin, we've put Kevin's uh, uh, website up on the bottom. Kevin's got a very, very good, informative website, uh, and we'll speak about some of the stuff that's on that uh, in a wee minute or two. Um, but we'll let Kevin take it away with a set of tunes. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I'll let let me play a set of traditional Shetland jigs. Fabulous, sir. Uh, fabulous. That's not rusty. That's not rusty. <laughs> it was a bit. <laughs> no, it's all fantastic. Fantastic. Folks, get out there. Can we just remind you, if you want to send any um, uh, messages in, that's Marjorie McNeil and Kate Britton saying Kevin Henderson in a big clap there. Look at that. Uh, the, there's um, uh, folks send in messages uh, for us because it's actually been a it's a kind of lonely time being a performing musician just now, sitting facing a laptop or a pad or something like that, or a phone. Uh, usually we get to see when you're smiling out there or, or, or grimacing or whatever else. <laughs> but, but we always get that reaction. But it's a wee bit funny this time. So any comments you can tell us or questions at all. Kevin, when you started playing the fiddle. I was just speaking about that a minute ago to uh, Morgan Tony. I was telling him how the fiddle was incredibly popular in Shetland. And he said, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I love to go to Shetland. I want to go to Shetland. And and I was talking to him about the education system that we, the fiddle has been taught a lot in the schools. And I think, is that when you started as well? Did you start in the schools? Was it? Well, no, actually, I started private lessons yes, for a short period lessons. with Trevor Hunter. Okay. Um, yeah. my, my two uncles at the time was going to him for 
fiddle lessons and I wanted to tag along. I kind of got an interest because my granddad loved fiddle music and I kind of got an interest through that and I tagged along with my uncles. So I went to Trevor for, I don't know, it must have been the Brooks of a year. But I mean, we, I wasn't getting lessons every week. It was like mm -hmm. now and again. And, That's what I did. But then I got the chance to get through the school system by Willie Hunter. And yeah. I went for that. I was at student school and uh, he was an incredible teacher. He, mm -hmm. I did not only just f like fiddle music, but life in general. <laughs> he was just, just, just such that. an inspiring man. And he, like, he made you want to play. And I, I remember actually one time I got into a, a playground scrap when I was a youngster <laughs> and I heard I hurt my hand and he spent the, the whole fiddle lesson teaching me how to box. He was like, you have to. Like, <laughs> 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 so that's well, the type of guy he was. He was a really inspiring character. Well, I, I, I'm teaching at the school, so I'm not sure if I'd be allowed to teach them how to box nowadays. I'd probably get <laughs> thrown out or something. So, yeah. No, I think I, I read on your uh, website as well about the survival techniques. So that makes sense now. That makes sense. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> But he sounds like a, a wonderful man. I was very unfortunate. I never met Willie Hunter. I've, I've lived in uh, Shetland now for 25 years. And the year I came to Shetland was the year Willie died, about three or four months before I moved here. So um, so I never actually got the chance to meet him. But of course, his legacy is just huge. Yeah, he was, and, oh, he was uh, just an amazing man. Uh, yeah. Obviously, an amazing musician, but an, an amazing fiddle teacher. Yeah, really inspired. And uh, what about yourself? Is that um, uh, Rob Dog? Do you teach a bit now as well? Or? Yeah, I mean, I've not. I do do most of the teaching I do is like fiddle camps and music mm -hmm. camps through the summer, and that I do a lot of that each year. But because of the coronavirus, Corona outbreak. I've been doing quite a bit of online teaching and also to, yeah. to fiddle groups in America as well through Zoom and all that. So I've been doing a lot more teaching yeah. since March. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had to do the same with the school. I'm teaching to the homes. All the children are getting lessons in their homes. We're, we're lucky yeah. as an we're lucky as an authority. At least we've got that set up. Some of the authorities in Scotland, the children are are, are getting like nothing. So um, yeah. it's a real shame, but um, but um, it's it's because I know it's difficult and t things to begin with, but it does have certain advantages. But for, for like say inclusion, you can teach someone anywhere. Basically nowadays, yeah. you know, you can do that. Absolutely, um, it's difficult for the actual. Um, I was speaking to uh, had well, I heard Ian Muir on the radio the other night speaking. And he said that the. At the academy this year, they had done their final uh, recitals online, which must have been yeah. quite, which must have been quite strange because it depends what some of these internet signals like and everything, you know. And he said, "Yeah, he says you were watching some guys going, you know, I I, I know you sound better than that, <laughs> you know, which is yeah, which which is good if you've got somebody marking you there. So it has its uh, has its uh, bits and pluses, doesn't it? So." But uh, yes. so so you uh, so do you still take pupils on then? So if anybody wanted to get in touch with you through the website, or that they could maybe arrange some lessons. Yeah, absolutely. Just through the through the website, it's all there. Right. Yeah, can show that up just now. And the whole this whole show's recorded, so it'll be going back out again. Um, and uh, people, you would not get a nicer um, a fiddle instructor. I can assure you. Uh, and, and, and he'll even speak Norwegian to you, maybe. I hope the family are well. How's the family? And the boys are growing up all the time. I know this. Yeah, they're growing fast. It's yeah. crazy how fast they grow. Uh, when you say crazy, crazy, I noticed there was crazy golf on the go the other day. I noticed. When you were... There was. Yeah, the youngest, <laughs> Liam, the youngest one, he got quite a few hole in ones. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they like to do that just to keep you to keep you on your toes. Exactly. So. Uh, Gary Pe Gary Peterson's just put a comment on saying he loved the boxing story. He was. Oh. <laughs> we had Hello, Gary, Gary. On with, I think we had Gary on. Was that two weeks ago? Gary came on and done the show as well, and it was a great one. So, uh, I, I know a big Celtic supporter like yourself. So, 
Yeah, he's a good guy, Gary. Yeah, <laughs> keeps it going. My <laughs> team, though, my team, the old hearts, we've had it this year. We've, we're gone. We're out yeah. of there. Uh, we had a chap as well, Francie Devine, on uh, for Ireland there about uh, oh, a month ago. His, 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 Francis Singer. And uh, he uh, used to be a talent scout for football clubs as well and all that. And I, all right. I, I, I said to him, I said, oh, I said, I'm a heart supporter. And he said, oh, he says, oh, Peter, he says, you can get a, you can get ointment for that, I'm sure. <laughs> 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 that was it. So, oh, yeah. But anyway, so, but you grew up here. You ended up playing in Fiddler's Bid through the, yep. the, your young lads. Uh, that a took long you time on. Ago. We're nearly coming up for our thirtieth anniversary, actually, as a band. Unbelievable, unbelievable! All yeah. around, what was it? All around the world was that the first album? Was it? That was the first one. Well, actually, we did a tape yeah. before that. It was a young enterprise right. scheme where we had to do a Jeepers. product and market it and that. And so we did a yeah. tape before with a, I think the Young Heritage and a band called Alliance was on that tape. But then the first, the first album we did in our own right was around the world. Yeah. I mind that uh, uh, weekend we done. Do you remember the one in Fair Isle when we all went out uh, for yeah. Fiddler's Bid and Homebrew? Gary Peterson and Co were there as well. And DeFustra, we all went out and had that Cayley weekend or whatever it was. Yeah, it was oh, fantastic. Wow. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the sun shined the, was... shone the whole time and it was just, ah, it was just, although we forget Gary and them singing about the trows and everything, and it just never stopped. It was just fantastic. It was just a yeah. Dean Owens. Dean Owens was with us as well. He was. That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was good fun. So anyway, so that took you through the, the that traditional side. Then you joined Boys of the Loch. Uh, yeah, that's. I joined. Well, I got asked a guest on an album at the end of two thousand and one, and then they had a tour in March two thousand two that they asked if I could do. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and then I was asked to join permanently after that, and that. That was a real, a real education actually. That tour, I learned so much from from touring with them. Just like a pile of different stuff, and like also like like the stage thing. Like Cahill is just a genius with an audience. And oh yeah, he's it's just it's, incredible, isn't he? Yeah. So I mean, it was a oh, great times. I miss. I really miss those tours. So it was uh, yeah. just what an experience to get to. Yeah, absolutely. Around. And then you've done stuff with Session A9 as well. Yeah, Session yeah. A9 was, I, I guested for them for a while for when Duncan Chisholm couldn't do the gigs I was standing in for him. And then he okay. just got too busy and then I joined. It's also another great band to be involved in. Great, yeah, good. Great good folk good musicians. And, yeah. and then when you were over in Norway, you moved on to Nordic Block. Um, yep. Which is a, a, maybe you could tell the viewers a wee bit about Nordic Block, so as to get the gist of what Nordic Block's about, really. Yeah, well, really the idea came from a late night at a festival, <laughs> funnily <laughs> enough. I met Anders Hall from Sweden, he was living in Norway at the time, and we hung out at a festival and just Basically, we got on great socially and we're just playing music. And he had had an idea for a while about having a like a fiddle trio. And then he thought about getting Olaf from Norway. And we also wanted to have like a different sort of like a student picture, I suppose. So we we kind of like focused on the different types of fiddles we could use. And then obviously we've got normal fiddle, but we also use octave fiddle and viola. And Olaf mm -hmm. also plays the hardanger fiddle, the national mm -hmm. instrument in Norway. And we we just found out by that accident really that like viola, fiddle, and hardanger together is quite an, a, like a big yeah. soon because you've got the low end for the viola, the fiddle sits in the middle, and the yeah. hardanger pokes out on the top. And we had a lot of fun. Just experimenting full, with that sort of thing. And full, full range of sound there when you've got you're covering about every angle, really. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah. when, I think 
I think one of the unique things about was is just the three different styles of like Swedish, Norwegian, and Shetland. Because if we were say we were three fiddle players from Shetland or three fiddle players from Norway or Sweden, it would sound very different. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the fact we've got that three very different styles really yeah. helps the the band sound. Yeah, yeah, that's just the maturity of it. Yeah, and like we spend a lot of time arranging it's it can be quite a process okay. i remember one one tune actually we had some like 30 something different versions of <laughs> a bit within the tune and <laughs> how how, how, how do you, how you remember that. that when how do you remember that when you got to stage <laughs> well <laughs> would you have you got yeah, would we, you have, would you have anything you could play us that would give folk an idea of that kind of style stuff that you're playing? Maybe yeah, could just I? something a wee bit, a wee bit different. I can actually play. Um, I'll play a waltz from Sweden. Super. Called that'd be lovely. Hal's Lilla Waltz, which means Hall Hal yeah Hal's Little Waltz. It's quite inter quite interesting. But Lovely. That's Hal's Lilla Vals. Lovely, lovely tune. What it's a beautiful trying? tune. I've just touched something on my phone here and it's done strange things. Oh, it's all right. I can still see it. <laughs> We're all right. Good. Yeah, it's probably. The, there's a couple of Swedish. Swedish I, I really like Swedish music. There's some really nice melodies. And nice. Um, yeah. um, there was about, oh, well, maybe about three or four years ago, the, the, there was somebody who came in to me and said, uh, my husband had all this accordion music and he had passed away and he wants it left to you. And I said, oh, thanks very much. Oh. And, uh, and uh, it was a box of music. And uh, you'll know yourself sometimes when people give you these boxes of music and you think, yes, and then you go, and then there's, oh dear, there's yeah. hardly anything you can use or something. Like that. 
sank his yeah. hymns book again or something. <laughs> anyway, yeah. this was all really, really good stuff. And there was good Swedish and Italian and all sorts of stuff on it. So I got quite a lot oh. of Swedish Swedish scottishies and things like that. And I've actually substituted them for pipe two fours now for band dances and things. So we use the Swedish yeah. scottishies instead. And uh, I one day went to broadcast some of them and tried my best Swedish to pronounce them. And uh, within about three seconds, I think a message arrived with Sweden telling me that they would send me a message telling me how to say them. And this great document, <laughs> this this great document arrived with a translation of what they all meant and everything. So it was quite good. So it was great. It was, it was great though because at least I knew what it meant. Kind of style thing. So. <laughs> so uh, what have you got in the pipeline just now? Are you working solo as well just now a bit? Yeah, well, um, I New started album? the duo with an American yeah. piano player. Yeah, did I, hear in the great, did I hear in the grapevine there's maybe an album coming out of this one? This is... Yeah, just in, I mean, we launched it in America in February, we had a tour there, and we were going okay. to do a launch in the UK in May, but obviously that got cancelled. And Yeah. And I mean, it's no ideal when you have an album coming out and you kind of tour it, but it's just how it is. But it's going to be mm -hmm. officially released in the UK is it next week or the week after? I can't mind right now. Start of July. Okay. So that's exciting, but it's just a shame we kind of go and perform the music live. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, I really a great way to, it's a great way to take your album What's on that? tour. But it is a great way yeah. to take your album out on tour, but. Um, I, I suppose people are understanding that it's just not possible just now, is it? And it's just, um, um, hopefully. It's just it is, and actually, I think it's going to be a long time before a, fo before a lot of folks are comfortable going out to concerts again. So yeah. I don't know when proper touring is going to go back to some sort of normality again. It's going to be, I think it's going to be a long haul for a while. It opens up all sorts of equations as well for full-time musicians. Um, yeah. There's very difficult things because, I mean, people say, oh, just put it online and sell it online. But they don't know how yeah. these companies, they, they, they don't know how these companies work. But we end up hardly making a penny off it when we put it online. No, and... it's like, it's not that long ago that, like, CDs was a big chunk of, like, a touring musician's income. And yeah. like, the likes of Spotify and that is just, like eradicated that and yep. like i understand that it's a great platform it's like the touch of a button and blah 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 but i, I just think it's utterly it's just I don't, I don't know what the word is but the fact is that a musician makes all that stuff possible and it's the musician that gets the least amount out of it absolutely it's just really bizarre uh -huh. And it's strange because it's been it's been kind of that way for a wee while, really. That musicians are kind of taken for granted. That we we talked about this one week on the show before. That oh, it's okay. The the musicians will just play for a few tins of beer. Uh, but yeah. they're no, they're no, and, and this kind of that kind of thing still sticks with some people. Where you say, yeah, but the musicians got a mortgage to pay as well, you know, and and people don't really understand that and. And when you break down a fee and what you actually do for a fee, there's yeah. not many people would be doing it, you know. Um, you, you wouldn't get many plumbers to go for that hourly rate anyway, that's for sure. Right? No. So. And if, like, folks yeah. sometimes come back with, well, why do you do it? But, I mean, you do it because you love it and it's what makes you happy. It's, it's, I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. It just, yeah. It's just bizarre, the whole thing like that. It's, I think I remember I remember playing at a festival with you oh many years ago out at Borough or something. I played the piano and you yeah, were at the right. fiddle festival. And we got together and played a few tunes and it was great. Because how long have you been in Norway now? Well, officially six, seven years, but unofficially a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, back and forward. Yeah, yeah. 2006 I started coming, but I was touring so much that I never like moved like officially because I was in and out of the country the whole time. And do, do you and actually I do move officially when? Do, do you actually like, do you actually do much music playing in Norway or? Um, 
Yeah, back and forth. I wouldn't say a lot. It's quite a small scene. So once you do the, oh. the sort of touring circuit, you have to wait a few years before you do it again, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Norway's like population wise about the same as Scotland, but there's a lot less venues and things and festivals. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I do play that. Like, we nod at Fiddler's Block mostly. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And then your brother, is Stephen's just round the corner for me here in the village I stay in in Shetland. So. Yeah. I saw him the other day. I did see him. I said, how's Kevin getting on? He says, oh, bro, fed up, I think. <laughs> 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 I said, oh, well. Um, Kevin, uh, so this new album, can the folk buy it on the website? Yeah, that's actually, you'll find that at kevinandneil.com. Kevin and Neil dot com. Yeah. N E I L. I'll get the carton through the yeah. back to put that up. So Kevin and Neil dot com and that's the new album. Is it mostly traditional stuff or is it No, actually a lot of it is our own tunes. When we spoke like I met Neil at a couple of like fiddle camps in America and we instantly hit mm -hmm. it off musically with jammed a lot and hung out and yeah. we really like what each another was doing and we had the idea of doing something and we also spoke about the fact we had a lot of new tunes that we hadn't brought to the bands that we played in and we thought it'd be a good project to just try out mm -hmm. a lot of the new tunes we hadn't tried before so the bulk of the album is that and then there's a there's about three traditional tunes for Shetland I think okay and the rest is composed by me and Neil fantastic it's a lot of original material coming out there. Like. Yeah. That's great. So, would you fancy giving us a wee set of tunes before we wrap the show up tonight? Absolutely. Uh, Ross, um, Ross, Ross sends his apologies. He, he, uh, well, I've had a message from him and he's had a, uh, a wee kind of technical bother difficulty tonight thing. So, we'll, uh, we will see him again some other time. That'll be good. But he's all right. Yeah. Don't worry. We did, we did get a hoodie on. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, I was worried. He weird. said, he said he was away camping next to the River Tay, so I was just checking that he was right, <laughs> still in one piece. <laughs> so that's fine. But I'm sure Ros will be back with us soon. Anyway, Kevin, what yeah. Do you yeah, I could maybe really play a couple of my own tunes. Really, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I'll do that. The first one is I wrote for Lucas, my oldest son. And the other one is a reel I wrote called Talon's Trip to Thompson Island. So I'll, I'll play this.
Fantastic, Kevin. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> lovely tunes, lovely tunes. The, uh, ah, cheers. Ka Karen's got the uh, email address for that there. Uh, Kevin, uh, well, that's Kevin Henderson and www.kevinandneil.com if you want that album that's out, folks. Uh, anything else yeah. that you'd like to speak to Kevin about, I'm sure just drop him a, a, a message and he'll get back to you. Uh, on his own one to do with tuition or... Uh, the, if Andy wants to share their winning lottery ticket with them or anything like that, that's that's perfectly. That would be great acceptable. just now. That, that's perfectly, <laughs> perfectly acceptable. So, um, Kevin, thank you so so much for coming on tonight. It's been great having you. Great to see well, you. Thanks again. for having me, Ian. Great to speak to you. It's so good to see you, and I hope uh, all these folks in Cape Breton will be buying that new album as soon as possible. Uh, so oh, great. That, that, that'll give you something to do tomorrow if you have to pack some up. Be fine. Yeah, it would actually. <laughs> be good. Listen, uh, take care and say hello to all the family. Lovely seeing you. I and will do. We'll, we'll hopefully catch you back in Hame soil someday. Definitely. Yeah. All we'll, the best, Peter. We'll get there. Thanks very much. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's been an amazing night of music. We've had Morgan Tony uh, from Cape Breton, and um, we've had Kevin Henderson on from Norway. Um, as I said a wee bit earlier there, Ross has just had a few technical difficulties, but we shall have him back as soon as possible, I'm sure. We'll be working on that, so his apologies for tonight. But listen, that's been absolutely great fun. Hello, Murdo McRae. How are you doing? There's Murdo. So we'll finish off with a couple of box tunes tonight, I think, and uh, play you with something. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do uh, the CJ Ennis and to Tam's Rock and Fiddle by Gordon Shan, one of my favourite composers. And um, also uh, the last one's called Chadwick's Bog. Uh, and yes, Agnes Doby has just said the late Kenny Wilson played a Habdanger fiddle. Yes, I knew Kenny very well, Agnes. He was the gamekeeper at Lead Hills, and my dad was the gamekeeper at Crawford John. So we knew him for years. In fact, I saw him about four or five years ago when I was down the fortunately he's passed by now. So, uh, and uh, that's it. So, anyway. We shall get by with things just now. So here's the sweet set of tunes, finishing off with Chadwick's Bog, which is a Shetland tune uh, by uh, Ronnie Cooper. So, and the bog was not a bog in the, the, the moor. I think it was a bog in the hotel, Chadwick's Bog. So that's that. So anyway, I'll play these wee tunes for you. And then uh, this has been Ripple FX, Cape Breton, or Ripple FX. Uh, this... The sounds of the Sundays in Scotland show with Peter Wood tonight and hopefully we'll have uh, Ross McNaughton back with us uh, next week and uh, next week I have, who do we have on as the guest order? Ah, we have Martin Donohoe from uh, Ireland coming on, a two row box player a great player, so that's something else uh, to look forward to hopefully and we'll have another guest for you by then as well so thank you so much guys thanks to all our guests thanks to karen my wife for uh being the ghost moderator tonight it's the first time she's ever done it through the back and you've done a wonderful wonderful job my love you've done really well getting everybody back and forward and things have been going up and down and uh that's fantastic and rebecca over in canada uh she, she's having a wee night off tonight, hopefully. Just not having to worry about too much for a change. So, anyway, Cam, well done. Just, uh, you've done a fab job. So, uh, here's this wee... Uh... Yeah, it's Murdo, you missed much yet, but you'll get it and catch up. Right? I think you'll fair enjoy it. Uh, the two fiddle players tonight were very, very interesting chaps to, to work with. So, here's a wee set of reels for me. And then, sorry... You don't want to really see my thumb. Let like me set aerials for me and then I'll say my good notes. <laughs> Thank you. 
There you go, a wee set of reels, finishing off with that shit on reel there, Chadwick's blog. Um, I really do hope you've enjoyed yourselves a bit tonight. Please share the show, you can still share it later on again and get it moving about. And uh, hope you can join us next week. So this has been Ripple FX. If you're ever fancying doing a show or something like a podcast, if you get in touch with Rebecca at Ripple FX Cape Britain, just drop her a, an email or that. It's very straightforward, really, and this one's taken off, and it's been really, really good fun. So I really do hope you're staying safe, enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll get this world back on track somewhere along the line. So from me tonight, folks, all I would like to say, I usually say it's good night for me, and Russ said it's good night for him, but it's good night for us all. So thanks very much for tonight, folks. Good night.